Well, let's return to today's top story now. Opposition leader Peter Dutton confirming the location for seven nuclear reactor sites if he wins the next election. Anthony Albanese was quick to slam the policy. But to take the politics out of the equation, let's bring in now the former chief executive of the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation, A.D. Patterson. A.D., welcome to the show. Look, Australia actually has the world's Thanks. largest deposits of uranium, uh, almost one third of the global total, as I understand it. Um, yet all of that valuable resource is currently exported. Do you think this is a reason why it might make sense to have a nuclear energy industry of our own here? It does make sense. I mean, we could uh, develop the ability to make nuclear fuel. That adds a huge amount of value, uh, about a thousand times to the uranium ore that we send out in the form of yellow cake at the moment. I think it's really important to recognise that uranium is powering all of the lowest carbon reliable energy in the world apart from hydro, uh, um, hydropower, which is uh, about the same size, um, and some geothermal in a place like uh, the north of New Zealand. But the, the lowest reliable always on uh, power comes from uh, uranium, and a chunk of that is dug out of the ground uh, and processed into yellow cake and shipped out of the country. Mm. Look, are there still concerns about nuclear waste and, and what to do with it? Should we develop seven nuclear reactors here in Australia? Well, I think I'll talk f first about the reactor technology and its safety, because if you can't have the reactors, you can't have the waste. Mm. And I think it's really important to recognise that um, the Gen Cost report of CSIRO, uh, the premiers on... on uh, uh, on SBS tonight, um, uh, work with something called the levelised cost of electricity. That's the cost of electricity at the fence before you put it into the grid. Okay. There's published engineering data for research that's been done in Germany and in Texas. Uh, the academic is a guy called uh, Robert Adel. Uh, I have spent a number of hours with other colleagues talking to him. He has written a paper that doesn't look at the levelised cost of electricity, which is what the Gen Cost report does by CSIRO, but at what is called the levelised full system cost of electricity. It includes things... That, so, the levelised cost of electricity so, for... So, just, viewers, just you to, don't need to bring know our viewers is. into this... So, just to bring our viewers into this, the CSIRO, I think, has said that it would cost about $8.5 billion per nuclear reactor. That, that's what you're talking about. But you're saying that's not an accurate yeah. picture of, so, of the full cost. Uh, well, it, th that cost is irrelevant once you understand that um, the levelised cost, uh, the cost that um, is the one that puts the electrons on the grid, and more importantly, the, the levelised full system cost. So the levelised cost which CSIRO uses mm. is not the same as the cost to the consumer that we, re we experience. To put it in, in real terms, in published work based on real grids in Germany and in Texas, the levelised full cost of electricity um, uh, uh, in, in Texas um, for solar panels, for example, yeah. is 122 80. US dollars per megawatt hour. A.D. Patterson, yep. I apologise, we are out of so, time. Look, I think our viewers, that might have sounded very complicated, oh. but I tell you what, we're going to learn a lot more about nuclear technology in the next 10 months before the next election. You never know, we'll all end up sounding like A.D. Patterson.